Hi, I'm Eagle, I'm a data scientist living in London, and welcome to another video of this time series crash course. In this video, we're going to be discussing the basic forecasting techniques, and we'll cover four different models, which are going to be the average model, the naive model, the seasonal naive model, and the drift model. Let's get into it. On the screen now is a notebook that we're going to work through that's going to give us the main concepts behind these four forecasting, basic forecasting techniques that I just mentioned. So let's begin with kind of saying why we want these basic techniques, like they're basic, but why why do we want anyone to know, that, know about them, right? So the idea of basic forecasting techniques is that it's kind of good practice to apply these very simple approaches because that will give us a good base to iterate further models from, right? It's almost like a you know, the most simple model. If we apply a more sophisticated model, will we beat the basic approach? If we're not, then we know, well, then our model is not very good. So we kind of need a baseline. And these, kind, these like very simple models provide this baseline for us in different ways. So we'll first begin with the most simple one, and this is the average forecast. So the average forecast is quite simple. I mean, I've said simple like six times there. But it's basically just the average of all the historical data summed up and forecasted forward. So you see here, all we're doing is summing up our time series, dividing by the number of data points we have, and then that's going to be the forecast for our future time step H. Um, so we're on time T. Um, so that's all we're really doing, it's, it's just the mean forecast. So we can show some Python. So I'm going to load in the air passenger volume data set, which I've been using throughout this course. I'm not going to go into much detail, um, but the notebook and also the blog is available in the description below. So if you want to know more information about the data set or go through this notebook in your own time, you can do it um, from the link down, down in the description. So the way we forecast um, using the average forecast is simply we can do this. We can just take the mean. And this is just going to tell us, well, you know, the, tech, the mean, the mean they, that we'll just set the training mean to be the forecasted mean of our test set, right? Nothing too simple. Again, you can look through this code in your own time, but all we're, all we're doing is getting the mean of the training set and then setting that to be the forecast of our testing set. Again, I've split the training test above here. You can split how you like, but I'm just doing a 20-80 split, 80% test, 80% um, train, sorry, and 20% test. And this is it. As you can see, the forecast is not great because you know it's kind of the like our model is increasing through time, and so we should really state make this model stationary and also um, uh, stabilize the variance. But you know this this mean forecast is clearly just saying well this is roughly the mean right, and so that's what's forecasting for. Not very good, but again it's a baseline model. We're not expecting it to be good. The next one is the naive model. So this one by naive, what it's doing is gonna say that. The next value is going to be the previous value forecasted, right? So at time step t plus h, we're just going to let the forecast equal the most recently observed value in our time series. Again, very naive, you know, almost stupid, some would argue. Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's like I said, it's a baseline model. The way you do this in Python is simply we get our training set and we just set the test set to be everything that the last value of the training set was. So in log minus one, so the last value of the passengers, and we can set that to be our forecast. And plotting this, we get this. Again, you can see here, the last value we have is uh, from August 1958, and it was 505, and so the, all the other values are 505, as you can see here. Again, setting in the last value of our forecast. The next one is called seasonal naive. Now this one's a bit more spicy, um, I guess you can say, and that is where we're gonna set the, the forecast to be the previous value in that season. So for example, in this case, where M is the number of seasonal components. So let's say, like I've written here, let's say we, we have a forecast for the next quarter. We set the, you know, the value of Q1 2022 to be equal to the previous value in Q1 2021. So we're just setting the next value to be what it was in the previous season that we observed it for. Um, so this model is really useful when we have clear and obvious seasonality, which we do, as you can see here in this case. So the way you fit this model is by, you know, I've done kind of like an iterate rows here. So what, we, what we're simply doing is that we're getting our data indexed by month, right? And so all we're going to do is we're going to get, you know, the month of what we want to forecast for. And then from that forecast, we're then going to set it, uh, that observed, observed month to the next forecasting month. We're plotting this. 
we get this, right? So we, all we can see here is that, you know, September 1958-404, it should be equal to September 1957-404, which we come here, you see there, 404, right? That's all it's doing. So same here, August is 505, 505, 505, right? So it's just setting the forecast um, for the future to be what it was in a previous observed season. Again, nothing too complicated, but you see this is pretty good actually. This is actually quite, um, you know, it's captured the data fairly well. Again, it's not just captured the trend, but it's captured the seasonality component because it's really obvious seasonality in this, in this data set. And a final model we'll consider is a drift model. So this is an extension of the naive forecast, but in this case, we're going to capture the trend component by letting our forecast either increase or decrease through time, basically slowly drift. So this is kind of the formula for it. As you can see, all we're saying is, um, has what is the value of time series at YT versus when it started? So if this value is positive and H is, you know, well, H is a fixed constant, then in general, forecasts are always going to increase. Likewise, if this value is negative, so say the value of forecast now is less than it was in the beginning, then it's going to be negative and we're also going to detrend. The problem of this is that it's always going to be increasing or increase or decreasing, sorry, uh, because like I said, this is a constant, this is a constant, so it's not going to change. And the problem of that is, well, in reality, most things don't go up, you know, the stock market doesn't always go up, um, nor does it always go down. So it's not very realistic, but again, it's, this is an example more like stochastic drift. So the way you do this is by simply, we take the first constant by taking the value of our time series at this point in time, or now, and the value was at the beginning, divide by the number of data points we have, so t minus one, and then we get h. Um, in our case, h can be anything you want it to be. Um, you know, mine is just set to one. Uh, it can, you can set h to any value you fancy. And then we get something like this. So it looks pretty good. I mean, it's captured the trend quite well. It sees increasing through time, but it obviously hasn't captured any seasonality, right? Um, so, you know, give or take these naive models or basic models, they're not perfect, but they sure provide a good baseline um, for any forecasting models you want to build in the future. Let's quickly recap the key points we discussed in this video. We saw here four basic forecasting models, which were the average model, the naive model, seasonal naive model, and the trend model or the drift model. Now, these four forecasting models aren't great themselves. You know, a lot, some of them don't capture trend, some don't capture seasonality, and some don't even capture both. However, they're really good baseline models that you can compare your more fancy or more creative forecasting models to ensure you're going along the right lines when improving your forecasts. If you like this video and want to learn more about time series and forecasting, make sure to check out the other videos in this playlist. Also to like, comment and subscribe. Now see you in the next one.